the blood of Christ, while it was to release the repentant sinner from the condemnation of the law, was not to cancel sin. <laughs> was not to cancel sin. The blood of Christ, while it was to release the repentant sinner from the condemnation of the law, was not to cancel sin. It would stand on record in the sanctuary until the final atonement. So, in the type, the blood of the sin offering removed the sin from the penitent, but it rested in the sanctuary until the day of atonement. Wow. I don't even need to say anything. Wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All who have truly repented of sin and by faith claimed the blood of Christ as their atoning sacrifice have had pardon entered against their names in the books of heaven as they have become partakers of the righteousness of Christ and their characters are found to be in harmony with the law of God. Their sins will be blotted out and they themselves will be accounted worthy of eternal life. So it's that part right there. Their character has to be in conformity with the law. And if not, then that exactly. means they won't be counted worthy of eternal life. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And this is what I also marked here for myself. Harmony with the law of God. I mean, tell me, please, who is, who is in harmony with Impossible. the Ten Commandments? Impossible. Words once spoken, deeds once done can never be recalled. Angels have registered both the good and the evil. Uh, the mightiest conqueror upon the earth cannot call back the record of even a single day. Our acts, our words, even our most secret motives all have their weight in deciding our destiny for weal or woe. Though they may be forgotten by us, they will bear their testimony to justify or to condemn. Did you hear what I just said? He just confirmed it by that citation. You see how I analyzed these statements? He just confirmed it. Your deeds will either bring you woe or will bring you rest. Your deeds will empower Jesus' intercession or nullify the power of the intercession of our God and Savior. Did you hear it? Guys, I'm not reading too to much of these quotes. No, keep reading, brother. Go ahead. Keep reading. It's, it's, it's correct. It's totally correct. And here's another quote that, that, that uh, confirms this. <laughs> this, no, 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 really, like, like, really, this is like in, in like, in, in total um, uh, uh, contradiction with the Bible. How have we used our time, our pen, our voice, our money, our influence? What have we done for Christ in the person of the poor, the afflicted, the orphan, or the widow? God has made us the, de uh, uh, the, the depositaries of his holy word. What have we done? with the light and truth given us to make men wise unto salvation. And now this sentence, no value is attached to a mere profession of faith in Christ. No value is attached to a mere profession in faith in Christ. Only the love which is shown by works is counted genuine. Yeah. You can say you trust in Jesus all day, all night. But if you have not lived in perfect conformity to the law and truly repented, nothing Jesus has done or said will avail you because Satan's accusation will triumph if you fail to do what is required. Thereby, you, the creature, you, let me bring out the implication. I want it to sink in. I don't know if you guys are understanding it, and I'm, I'm seeing you do. You know, you, the creature, will empower Jesus' intercession to be accepted or you will weaken and nullify the intercession of the Almighty Son of God, and you will empower Satan over against Jesus' intercession for you. You understand? That's what is exactly is being implied by these statements, though the Seventh-day Adventists won't put it that way. So at the investigative judgment, it's going to look like this. Jesus is going to be pleading uh, for the subject, like for us to to be uh, uh, to be forgiven, and Satan is going to be accusing us. So, like, let's say on one on one side there's Jesus, and on the other uh, side is Satan. Um, uh, Jesus is pleading for us. Satan is accusing us. So, and this is the this is the quote. While Jesus is pleading for the subjects of his grace, 
Satan accuses them before God as transgressors. So that's part of the investigative judgment, how it's going to look wow. like in her mind. Can I bring out the implication? Then, go ahead, finish. Read the other quote because I got to bring out the implication if people understand what these quotes are saying. But go ahead, make your other quote. Uh, the other quote is from the same page. Jesus does not excuse their sins, but shows their penitence and faith and claiming for them forgiveness. So he is claiming forgiveness at the investigative judgment. He's not the one who forgives. He's claiming forgiveness. He lifts his wounded hands before the Father and the holy angels, saying, I know them by name. I have given them uh, on the palms. I have graven, uh, sorry, I have graven them on the palms of my hands. Yes, which is a citation of Isaiah 49, 16. Now, guys, let me break yeah. down the implication. I, I'm getting what he's saying, what Ellen G. White is saying. Jesus asks the Father, pleads before the Father, like asking the Father to sit on his throne. Now understand what you just read. Jesus, Satan, will be standing before the Father. Jesus will be pleading with the Father. I have them written in the palms of my hand. <clears throat> Forgive them for my sake. And Satan will say, no, they deserve to be condemned because they have failed to perfectly carry out the law. At the end of the day, you know who wins? Whoever is able to live the law perfectly, which means that Jesus' plea before the Father can fail and Satan's accusation can prevail. Let me repeat it again. Jesus' pleading before the Father can fail and Satan's accusation can prevail because Jesus can plead for you all day, all night. At the end of the day, what's going to determine whether Jesus will be heard is if you've been able to live the law perfectly. Am I correct? Correct. So do you guys correct. understand? Uh, just give me a, a, a second for it to sink in. You understand? The scheme of Ellen G. White. Jesus pleads before the Father. Father, they're written in the palms of my hand. You know, he doesn't remove their sin. He, he pleads pardon for their sin. And Satan says, no, they have failed to live perfectly. They haven't truly repented. You, you cannot remove their sin. They deserve to go to hell. At the end of the day, it all comes down to you. If you have done what the Father demands and living the law perfectly and truly repented, then Jesus' pleas will prevail and Satan's accusation will fail. If you fail, then that means Jesus' pleas will fail and Satan's accusation will prevail over against Jesus' pleas, though he's the Father's equal and supposedly greater than Satan. 